Por mi mago de las quincorla agus i dúis bada bo watlam gárdúil a úsáid a dúirt an brehef Charlton i gohéx na gardi le Jenef agus dúirt sé ní féidir an dóv a chur in igial a chéal agus comhartlí sé in áitíg an eile sa dúirt gal dúirt sé is onan cest cearta cur agus a ve la valley tree jam prosis con fragra a all judge Peter Charlton. In his recent report, which I'll be looking at tomorrow in the Dáil, and I won't go into it, but he used two phrases or two um, sentences which I want to make use of here. He said, you can only deceive for so long. And he said, to ask the right question is to go far in answering it. Now, we see a Europe developing where we're not allowed to ask questions, where we see foreign policy discussed in terms of who is our friend and who is not our friend. And indeed, unfortunately, Las Corla, we've got a letter from the Corla, and I understand he might have been in a difficult position, but he has written to all TDs. He, he has said clearly that he's not telling us how to, what to say or how to act, but he's reminding us that the one China policy has been long in place. It's the government policy, and he tells us that it's up to us. However, it's important to remind us that China is our friend and Taiwan isn't. And we have similar use of language in relation to Saudi Arabia and a failure to condemn them. Uh, similar use of language in relation to Turkey. And despite all the complexity and despite all education, we're now reducing foreign policy to who is our friend and who is not. The Lisbon Treaty, which I proudly canvassed against primarily, leaving out the market and the free market, because it was setting down in black and white the militarisation of Europe. There was one good little paragraph in the Lisbon Treaty that said all decisions should be made as near as possible to the citizen. That, of course, has been absolutely ignored, and we have decision after decision made by unelected people. Indeed, twice in this stall, we've been subjected to two unelected people from Europe talking to us in a doll. I think it's unprecedented, but I'm subject to correction. I watch with dismay and I take every opportunity to highlight the continued use of Shannon, like my colleagues, Deputy Wallace and Deputy Daly and Deputy uh, uh, Sullivan. The continued use of Shannon, tolerated, but no questions, and when questions are asked repeatedly, no answers given. I've watched PESCO being signed in my name, which I never gave permission for, and we committed to regularly increasing defence budgets in real terms in order to reach agreed objectives. At present, 2% of the GDP. This equates to an eventual, an eventual increase in military spending at 2,000 million per year. And then we had the EU, the EU's High Representative for Foreign Affairs, Frederica Mogherini, calling it a historic day for European defence. Can you imagine a non-elected woman telling us that this is a historic day for defence? More and more money into the militarisation of Europe. I don't have the time to go into all of the details, but you know the Minister, and at a time of pressing social needs, particularly in relation to housing and health, how we can commit to increasing the money going into defence in inverted commas in Europe. It's, it really is it's just simply dokrecha in our era. Agus vek mek sul gamai athru on na mano atas jif surrealtis. Gamai shid frik hoga agus gamai shid ik tospotansh an bali kon shiakon ave agan se 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 dawan shakas ave tivlen a fear ato imon hoga. In relation to the other aspect that's of great concern to me is the European border and Coast Guard, which was there, but it has been accelerated. We've had the creeping militarisation of Europe becoming an accelerated process. And the plan to strengthen the European border and Coast Guard, established in 16 with a force of 1,500 members, and we're planning to increase that to 10,000 so that we can protect Fortress Europe. And we have pre-European Council statements and post-European Council statements utterly failing to deal with the challenges. Yes, Brexit is a challenge, but compared to climate change, it pales into significance. Pale, compared with the militarisation of Europe and the consequences of that, Brexit pales into significance. And compared with the democratic deficit which led to the Brexit vote in the first place, which you absolutely refuse to look at, this government and other governments, what led people to vote for Brexit? 
Clearly, to me, a huge part of that was the democratic deficit that Europe and the various meetings by the councils are absolutely refusing to look at. We look at Poland, Bulgaria. The, with this month is a year after the death of the Maltese journalist. We saw another journalist murdered lately in Bulgaria because she dared, dared to talk about corruption in that country. We've seen how our own High Court judge was treated by the papers in Poland. We have serious democratic problems in all of our countries in Europe and we dare to lecture or to tell other people how to live. Really, I want a Europe. I'm a proud Irish woman. I'm also a proud European. But we joined up for a market, for a trade deal. We never joined up, ever, ever to lose our sovereignty or to lose our neutrality. It is time for this country to grasp the metal and stand up and speak for peace in this country and to not determine our foreign relations by who is my friend. That is something akin to what children might do in a playground. We have learnt nothing from the group Am mentality that led to the disaster in this country. Go to Mila Mahogat, Alaskan Corley.